Hi, good evening. Welcome to Lawrence Day Evening Reflection and thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Bishop Ariel Santos and again we're here to proclaim the good news of the kingdom which is the only subject we, we actually uh, discuss is the kingdom of God. We proclaim the, the gospel, the good news uh, that that kingdom brings to us. You know, our desire as human beings is for the kingdom of heaven to take over our kingdom, this world. Because uh, <clears throat> we're, I don't know about you, but we're tired of, of being uh, ruled not by the righteousness and justice of God, but by uh, the world's failures, the world's shortcomings, the world's alternative to life which is way way short of the fullness of life that God wants for us so that's what we pray for in uh, in the Lord's Prayer when we say uh, for God's kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as in heaven but interesting that same prayer also outlines for us how we can participate in the bringing about of that prayer of the kingdom of God coming here is uh, when we ask for God's grace to give us our daily bread and to forgive us our, our sins, our trespasses. But we ask that as we also forgive uh, those who trespass against us, those who sin against us. That's how the kingdom of God will come. It begins with the forgiveness of sins. As we, we can see from the gospel from last Sunday, Jesus appearing to the disciples as they locked themselves in a room because of fear uh, and anxiety. They were uh, in fear because they, they probably were thinking uh, they got the, the the authorities got their leader first. Maybe, you know, chances are they're, they're next, right? But also, they had mixed feelings as well because they also were feeling guilty about abandoning their Lord after talking big and promising to go to prison with Him and, and dying with Him and then, and then deserting Him. Uh, in his time of need but anyway Jesus while they were gathered in fear locked themselves inside the room Jesus appears to them and they were all startled they were they were surprised and shocked because they were not expecting what they saw they saw a, a, a fully uh, resurrected human being they probably were expecting obviously I mean they were expecting a ghost you know maybe we, we don't know exactly what they were you know what the, their beliefs are as far as uh, afterlife is concerned but obviously one of the things they were they believed in was that you know that uh, the spirit lives on so they thought they were seeing the spirit of Jesus. And Jesus had to tell them, I'm not just the spirit. I'm not just the ghost. I'm fully resurrected. Which gives us a preview of what, what, uh, what, is await, what awaits us as we hope for it. You see, in the creeds, we, we say we believe in the resurrection of the body. We believe in the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As Christians, our hope is even after we die, one day God will restore our life. The original life that he gave us. He, he intended for us human beings to have a spirit and a, a body. Spirit and a body. He, we are a unique uh, species 
that God created. You know, he, he created angels, but they're spirits. He created animals and some other animate and inanimate objects, but they're material, but they don't have uh, spirits. But we, only we, human beings, have a spirit, uh, a soul, and a body. We're a hybrid of God's, uh, the, of the, the two realms, the spiritual and the material. That's what a human being is. And God intended for human beings to be that. And you know what the Bible says? When he saw what he created, it was good. It was good. And yeah, because it's, it comes from God because God is good, right? And you know what? Uh, we all know the story, right? Death entered into the world. The living being, living uh, being, which is man, which is a hybrid of spiritual and the, the material, now experiences death. What is death? Death is division. I say that particularly and generally. Particularly for, for human beings, death is the division of the soul and the body. But generally speaking, any kind of division is death. So, you know, I just sidebar. Uh, do not be involved in any division. Any uh, divorce or any uh, schism. Because that starts with, uh, with hatred, you know. And, uh, and a, a, a attitude of surrender and giving up on people just because they you know were the different they differing opinions etc etc but that's another thing but anyway uh, death is the division of soul and body and a soul a soul without a body is called a ghost a body without a soul is called a corpse both dead both defeated both not original intention of God and the intention of God from the beginning is for man to be alive as spirit and body so when death entered the world through sin God immediately made a provision to reverse that to restore the life that he has given to man and intended for that life to never end, you know. If you read the 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 Old Testament, the Deuterocanonicals, God intended His creation to to live forever, to continue to exist, and it's especially man to continue to exist. And so, uh, and so He will restore us. He will resurrect us, and we see a preview of what resurrection is about in the resurrection of Jesus. So he was telling the disciples, hey, hey, I came back from the dead. Actually, that's not true. He didn't come back from the dead. He went through death and through it. Not, you know, imagine, imagine this as a, the wall of death. All uh, Christians go, uh, I mean, all, all people go to that. Jesus, <coughs> did not just go to that point and then bounce back to life to end up on this side. No, he went through death, conquered it, went through death, and got past it. So he's on the other side of death. No longer to die again. We are on this side of death at this point. We die, okay? We die when we die, you know, we... We, the Bible describes it as sleep. We go to a deep sleep until, until the resurrection of the body one day at the day of the, our Lord, when we will pull us through death, get us to the other side so that like Him, we are never to die again and we can live in the life of the world to come and never experience death again. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
He is called the firstborn of the dead, the first fruits of all creation. That is our hope, to be alive again. Not just recycled back from the dead, dead not to come back from the dead, not just resuscitated, not like uh, uh, Lazarus. He was raised from the dead, but he died again. Jesus uh, died once on behalf of all. He died to sin once and he never is to die again. Again, that's our hope. Why? Because the, the life that God wants for us, that gave us, is good. Nobody wants to die. The thing is, the good news is, even if we die, we live. We will live. We will. We have that uh, the, the life of the world to come waiting for us promise of God for us to all be restored uh, and live in that it's a long process yes it's a long process and the truth of the matter is I speaking for myself and I'm sure you can you can say this as well at this point we cannot imagine being perfected like Jesus right we all have been destined we are all destined to be conformed to the image of the Son of God and the image of the Son of God is not just physically resurrected by the grace of God, but also living His life. We are far from totally living the life of God at this point. We're still sinners. We still sin. We still commit mistakes. We, we still get lost. We still are in darkness. We're not perfected yet, but we're being perfected. And the promise, I like very much the, the, the reading, uh, the New Testament reading from yesterday, I mean from Sunday, which is from the first letter of St. John uh, in chapter 3. It says, I'm reading from verse 1 first. See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us that we would be called children of God. You know, it's the grace of God. And, so, and it says, such we are, we're children of God, because of Him. Not because we earned it, not because we made the grade, not because we, we've uh, met the criteria, but because God reconciled uh, us to Himself. And he said, it continues and says, for this reason the world does not know us, because it did not know Him. But now we are children of God. And it, we know now that we're children of God, but it has not appeared as of yet what we will be. We know we're children of God now, but we can't imagine uh, how, what will happen to us when we are perfected. We know that when He appears, we will be like Him, because we will see Him just as He is. He is. We will be like Jesus when He appears. How that will happen, I don't know. It's God, it's God uh, working in us to will and to work according to His good pleasure. And He's perfecting us. But we will be like Jesus. And it doesn't stop there. It goes on and says this. You know, you know this, the typical reaction to the good, a good news that, uh, such as that is, Oh, we're going to be perfected anyway. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be saved anyway. We're going to be given eternal life anyway. So why not just live the way we want to? Why not just sin? Why not just uh, follow our lusts and satisfy them? No, no, that's not the right reaction. That's not the right response. The kindness of God leads to repentance. Uh, the reason we don't change our ways is because in the first place we don't understand we don't appreciate fully what God has done and his grace and his kindness this is what St. John says he continues by saying everyone who has this hope who understands this everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure he says, if we truly understand this and have this as our hope, we will not 
be like the prodigal son, leaving the father's house, squandering his wealth, and wasting his life. We will be not, not be like that. We will respond with thanksgiving, and we will purify ourselves just as he is pure. We will uh, respond by giving up ourselves to God's service and by walking before him in holiness and righteousness all our days. Again, by his grace, we still will fall and stumble, but we, to the best of our ability, we will purify ourselves, we'll sanctify ourselves. We will pattern our lives according to the image and likeness of, son, of the Son until we are conformed to that same image. So may we have that hope fixed on Him so that more and more we get closer to our destiny, which is to be like Jesus. Thank you once again for joining us tonight on the Wednesday Evening Reflection. This has been Ariel Santos saying God bless you and keep you and may his, he, his, make his face shine upon you. We'll see you again 